Okay guys, uh, Steve here from the Academy and I'm gonna take a look at a little bit of algebra, but don't worry, it's gonna be drawing nice pictures. Uh, we're gonna look at inequalities and we're gonna focus in just on the number line and how to draw once you've got your answer for your inequality. So just focusing on, on plotting it on a number line. So for this, there's three things you need to be aware of uh, before you get cracking into doing any of these number line questions. You need to be aware of N, Z and R. And that's your natural numbers, your integers, and your real numbers. So your natural numbers is just your counting numbers, okay? And when you go into a room and you count, you don't go, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? You don't go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. You always start on one. And you count up like a normal person, one, two, three, four, five, six. So our natural numbers are just your positive whole numbers, okay? That's a definition, positive whole numbers. Now, our integers are the positive and the negative whole numbers. So you could say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and so on. Uh, also include in there 0. So in here, um, I could say like minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and I've done these dots to represent that this goes on forever in each direction, whereas for our natural numbers, it's just positive whole numbers. Finally, real numbers is pretty much any number in between. So, for example, a real number could be 1.5. It could be 7 over minus 3. Okay, it could be 11 over 2. It could be 0 0.71682. It's every number in between. It doesn't have to just be whole numbers, but it is also whole numbers. So when we're drawing our inequalities, what, the, what you'll see written in your exam, your test, you'll see something like this, where it says x with a look at E, kind of weird look at E, and the letter. So at least say X is an element of N, X is an element of Z, or X is an element of R. And that means it's either a natural number, it's an integer, or it's a real number. Okay? So let's uh, then just take one last look at a few things here. On our natural numbers and integers, whenever we're drawing these on our graphs, we're gonna use dots, okay, for both of these guys. We're gonna use dots or points, if you wanna say that one. And for real, we're gonna use uh, a line and an arrow. And I'll show you what I mean now with three examples. So, uh, this case here, you remember that the, uh, hopefully that the inequality eats the bigger number, it's like the crocodile. So the bigger number here is three. So you can say three is greater than X, or you can say X is less than three. So what numbers are less than three? Well, that would be two, one, zero, and so on and so on. But they tell us it's X is an element of natural numbers. So the only numbers less than three that are whole numbers are two and one. So I would signify that with a dot on two and a dot on one. I don't put a dot on three because it's less than three. So there's me plotting uh, X less than three there as X is element of N. Let's have a look at x is an element of z, uh, picked another one now. This time, x is greater than six, and you'll notice there's another line underneath. That means greater than or equal to. So it means it can also include the value six. So in this case, which numbers are greater than six? They're all the numbers to the right. So I'm gonna say six, seven, eight, nine, and you can draw a little arrow there, to signify it keeps going on forever if you like. Okay, and I included six here because it had the equal to sign here. Whereas before I didn't include three because it didn't have the equal to. Last one then is for our real numbers. And here I have X is less than minus three. X is an element of R. So what that means is any number less than minus three is to the left of it on the number line. So for example, minus four, minus five, minus six, and all those numbers keep going. But also because it's real, it could be like, for example, I could say minus three and a half is an acceptable answer because that's less than minus three. Okay, I could say minus 4.2, I could say minus 100. So how do I signify all those values? What we're going to use here, instead of using dots like we did in the previous two, we're going to use an arrow and a thick line. So at three, I'm going to draw a circle and all the numbers less than three, I'm going to draw a nice thick line like that and point in that direction. And what I'm saying here is X can be all those values 
less than three. Now, the circle means I'm not including three, but I'm going right up to it, right up to it. So I could be like minus 3.0001, okay? That's how we signify it. Uh, when we have real numbers, we're gonna use thick lines with an arrow. Now, there's two types of circles. This one has not been shaded in. If, I'll do it in blue, if instead said x is less than or equal to minus three, I would then fill in that circle to include that value. So that bit there in blue would be me including that in there if it had the equal to. So if it has the equal to, you've got a shaded in dot. If it doesn't have the equal to, then you leave the dot unshaded like that. Let's take a look at an exam paper question. Okay, so in 2018, question 11, you had five minutes to do this, right? They asked a gorgeous question um, about the number line, about your NZR, and you had to create an inequality. So what they did was they gave you this uh, setup, as you can see here, with the number line ready to go, and you had to figure out an inequality and state what domain was it a natural and ensure real. Now, the beauty is in some of these, you could actually give one or two answers and you'd still be correct. So let's just take a look at the first one. First one here is done for you. Uh, they've put in like the dot that's shaded and the, the circle that isn't. And like I said before, if it's got shaded, it's got the equal to sign. And if it's not, it doesn't. And then they already ticked it to say it's real. Great, so let's take a look at the second one. We've got dots only. So we've got dots only, so it must be natural or integer. But if we take a look, it's got minus numbers. So straight away, I know that this is an integer problem. And the easiest thing for me to do is just to say, well, look, I'm gonna go from minus three up to one. So like before, I'm gonna make a sandwich with X in the middle. And I'm gonna say it's gonna be greater than or equal to minus three, because I'm gonna include it. And it goes all the way up to one, so I could say up to one. Now, it would not be wrong to say this underneath as well. Where you said X was greater than minus four, but you didn't include it and less than two. You know, you'd be, you'd be right. I think you're a bit mad, but sure, why not? Okay, either would get you the correct answer. Take a look at the next one here. Uh, we've got dots again, so it's gonna be natural or Z. And I think for me, it's only got positive whole numbers. So I just say, well, look, this is natural. And you've got choices here. You could say, look, um, X is uh, greater than or equal to one and less than three. You could also say it's just x is less than three, less than or equal to three. Because if you remember, natural numbers don't include zero and lower. You could also say x is less than four. That would be perfectly fine as well. Lovely flexibility in that question, but just getting the understanding of which one you're looking for. Now, last one here on our reel, our giveaway, but if you take a look, we can see that the line is shaded in and that there's two circles each end. So if there's two circles each end, I know there's no equal to. So I know it's gonna be X sandwiched with something without the equal twos. And it's just gonna be minus two to four. So finally, my real minus two to four. And that's there, a full paper question. They have five minutes done in about a minute. Best of luck.